first the screen is telling me. <laughs> Hello, um, we'll get started in about four minutes. Um, if you have not done class with me this week yet, uh, I did a class Monday and a uh, class yesterday, and I'm doing a variation, um, a, a variation on the same sequence um, each day. So this week uh, we're focusing on back bends, and if that uh, doesn't strike your fancy, then uh, you might be surprised. It's a nice um, it, it's a, I feel like it's a very, um, <laughs> I, I hesitate to say gentle approach to the uh, shoulders and upper back, but uh, hopefully um, mindful would not be um, an incorrect statement. <laughs> but uh, if you do the class and you find it to be not mindful and not uh, gentle and sucky, um, just let me know. I'd love to hear, love to hear uh, harsh criticism. Just kidding. I mean, I think it would be helpful, but uh, who wants to hear harsh criticism? I don't know. I don't know who does. Um, people who really care about improving, and that's who. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> so, who are you? Let me know. If I know you, if I don't know you, um, I'd be happy to know you. Uh, yeah, it's this is going well. I from my from my standpoint, uh, the uh, yoga secluded yoga uh, experience. Um, I feel like it's something that is really helpful to do right now. Um, I was comparing it to how I give my children a time out, and I realize that I need time outs too. Um, in those heated moments when uh, the gravity of the situation is just getting you frustrated, uh, verging on angry, and you just, you're compelled to act and speak from that frustrated and angry place, even though that's not the kind of person, that's not the kind of partner, that's not the kind of friend, the kind of parent, you probably want to be, I know I don't want to be that kind of parent, um, you're compelled to do it anyway, and I've noticed for myself that if I can get away, give myself that time out, <laughs> um, sometimes I can re-approach the scenario um, with a better perspective and with a uh, calmer um, disposition. So anyway, this is, I hope you're not, <laughs> I'm not saying leave your kids stuck in their room for 90 minutes while you go do a yoga practice, but I am, uh, I do think that this is kind of a time out uh, that you kind of, you know, you like carve out this time, you carve this time out, and this will be a resource of time out centering, grounding energy that hopefully you can uh, access quickly um, <laughs> and throughout your day. So uh, that's, at least that's what I, I hope for. I hope that's doing this, I hope it's having that effect for me. Um, yeah, I was telling my, I was telling my friend Blair, who may or may not be watching right now, uh, <laughs> I was saying how uh, this day started out for me with um, me trying to get my kids dressed and uh, out in the you know outside for a walk around the neighborhood, and um, I had to give myself a time out from my older daughter. And when I left her room and came back, she was uh, taking down every picture that I'd ever drawn from her off of her walls and throwing it in the trash. <laughs> so. So yeah, that was that was a moment to uh, draw on my timeout, um, and yeah, 
We got through it. We got through it, and uh, we took a reckless drive around the neighborhood. My, um, it was funny. I, we were in the car without car seats, and I was like, "We're going to take this phone to Tia's house. I need to deliver something to a friend's house who lived just up the hill." And I said, "Okay, you're going to sit in the car without your car seats." And man, uh, <laughs> I hope that didn't set much of a precedent, but uh, sh they sure loved that. Uh, anyway, if you're a police officer or a highway patrol and you're listening, um, please don't come and arrest me. Um, it was, you know, it was desperate parenting. Anyway, I'm one minute into my start time and I really have a lot that I want to do with you guys. So I'm going to stop chatting here and start talking seriously over here. Okay, so please establish a uh, a place in your home or wherever you are and um, lay down your mat, have your props that you might have um, close by. If you don't have props, uh, a towel would be helpful today because we will be using a strap. Um, and take a moment right now to think whether you have time for this practice. Um, Hopefully the answer is yes. Hopefully you tuned in because you have 75-ish minutes to practice yoga. And remember that you have that, you remember that you have this time and stay here for that time. If you are establishing a home practice, my advice is get through the classes. Don't set a precedent of stopping halfway through because it will get harder and harder to follow through on practice. So if you if you follow through on that first practice, then you have set you have set the precedent, you have set the bar, it will be easier to come back to that practice in the future. That's my thinking. Okay, without further ado, please come to a comfortable cross-legged seated position, perhaps up on some padding, so that the level of your pelvic crests is higher than the level of your knees allowing for your inner thighs to relax and release. Cross your legs at the ankles. Oh, I gotta start recording, sorry. So many buttons to press, sorry. Okay, cross your legs at the ankles. Rest your hands on your thighs and please begin to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nostrils and audibly sigh it out through your mouth. With this breath, arrive. I am um, calling my class this week, Arrive Ad Infinium. Infinitum. Infinitum, Ad Infinitum. <laughs> the idea meaning that you Come into your body, bring your mind into your body again and again and again throughout the practice. So as you arrive here on your mat, here in your body, ask yourself how you are feeling physically at this moment. And then listen for your body's response. Are there any areas calling for attention out of discomfort, pain, soreness? If so, let your mind tend those areas. Put a microscope on that region. And then by looking there, can you begin to create more movement of energy through those spaces? And then consider if you have a more general energy at this moment. Are you feeling tired and grounded? Are you feeling jittery and anxious? Notice, be curious, and can you face what you are feeling in this moment with acceptance? So can we see where we are, accept that we're feeling that way, and then move forward from this moment?
Relax your feet. Soften the ankles, shins, calves, knees, thighs. Let the outer hips melt earthward. Sits bones root down. And then from the grounding of your legs and hips, lift up out of your trunk, go, grow tall along your spine. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, actively lengthening the sides of your body from your hips to your armpits. Keep the sides of the body long and then loop your shoulder blades together behind your heart. You should feel, you may feel a contraction of the upper back muscles as the collarbones broaden and the chest lifts. Now allow the weight of your forearms to melt down towards the floor, shoulder blades, shoulder blades sliding down the back of the chest. This attention to the chest opening may have caused your head to tilt back. Bring your chin down parallel to the floor, ease the sides of your neck back, aligning the head over the heart, the heart over the center of the pelvis. Today, please bring a fingertip or two to your upper abdomen. Create a tone there beneath your fingertips by drawing your left and right lower front ribs into a central point. And then push gently with your fingertips towards your back body, creating strength at your center, length through your low back. And this will be, uh, these actions will establish a um, stability for the low back throughout our back bending practice today. Hand back to the thigh. Become aware of um, unconscious expression in the face. So even as you rest your face, are there places that continue to express uh, frustration or discomfort? Notice those places. And then allow the forehead to be broad, cheeks slack, eyelids heavy. Bring all of your attention to the breath. Direct breath in and out through your nostrils. And begin the practice of Ujjayi Pranayama by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat. This triumphant breath um, is, um, <laughs> is created by this contraction of the upper, uh, upper throat. And it allows you to breathe more slowly and deeply. And it also has this lovely caveat of this uh, aspirant sound. Can you listen for the sound of your own breath? And let that sound act as a soundtrack for this breath meditation. A tool to continually draw your senses into the present moment with the body, with the breath. Let's do a few rounds of our box breathing, or square breath as I also like to call it, uh, meaning that it has four parts, all the same duration. The first part being an inhale, the second part, part holding the breath, the third part exhale, the fourth part holding the lungs empty. We're going to do each of those four parts for four counts. We'll go two, two rounds together and then I'll invite you to do the uh, third and fourth round on your own count. 
Exhale, empty your lungs. And we'll inhale together for one, two, three, four. Fill and hold, maybe tilting the chin to the chest. But one, two, three, four. Lift the chin, empty the lungs. One, two, three, four. Draw in and up on your pelvic floor, Mula Banda, for one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Fill and hold, to possibly tucking the chin. One, two, three, four. Exhale with control. One, two, three, four. Hold empty, draw in and up on the pelvic floor. One, two, three, four. Two more rounds, your own count. Once you've completed four rounds of box breath, please uh, bring your hands together in front of your heart. We'll chant OM three times before beginning the moving practice. Exhale, empty the lungs, and inhale for the first of three OMs. your palms to your thighs, and then slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. Okay, we're going to stay seated, simply cross and uncross and recross your legs. As you inhale next, sweep your arms out, up, and overhead, reaching up to the sky. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your side. Shoulders roll back, palms forward. Inhale up. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to your side, shoulders roll back. One more like that. Inhale up. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Again, inhale to sweep the arms up. This time, exhale, revolve the chest to the right, left hand to the outside of the right thigh, right hand behind. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Collarbones broad, gaze over the left shoulder, inhale up, move with the breath, exhale, revolve right, keeping the legs and hips grounded, inhale, center, soften the edges of your mouth, exhale, left, one more round, inhale, center, grow tall, exhale, revolve right, Inhale, center, last side, exhale, revolve left. Inhale, arms overhead, and exhale, fold over your right thigh. Keeping your left hip tacked down, reach out through your left fingertips. Breathe here, focusing attention on the left side body. So with these early, somewhat subtle postures, take out your magnifying glass, notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling, and look at those areas closely. Can you move energy through those areas on the conduit of your breath? 
creating the the experience of um, of expansion of um, unblocking. Inhale, round up, arms overhead, exhale, walk your upper body over the left thigh, right hip tacks back and down, reach out through the right fingertips, tuck chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee. Again, notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. Move your attention, move your breath through those spaces. Use the postures to bring you deeply into the experience of your body at this moment. Inhale back through center, arms overhead, and exhale, fold forward. Walk your hands out in front of you, keeping your sits bones grounded. Release your forehead towards or to the floor. Breathe into your back body. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? Use the poses, use the breath to come into your body to arrive in the moment. Either come up by walking your hands back towards your hips or draw back through the sides of the waistline. Reach your arms overhead and exhale, arms back to your sides. Doing a little more sitting today. Take any padding out from underneath your hips. You might keep it handy. Find your strap or towel. Come to Virasana, knees together. Angle your shins apart. Point your toes. Grab the flesh and muscle of your calves, pull it back and apart as you take a seat between your heels. So, uh, if your knees are in any pain or discomfort in this shape, get some height underneath your hips in the form of a blanket or a block or several things. Uh, let your inner thighs root down, stay grounded through your sits bones as you grow tall along your spine. Grab your strap, extend your right arm up along your right ear, and then tap the base of your neck with your right fingertips, right elbow towards the ceiling, left arm out, palm faces back, and then grab two ends of the strap, or if you have the space, try to reach those fingertips. If fingertips are easily accessible, then grab your wrists. Uh, hug the left shoulder blade onto the back of the chest, Root through the sits bones, reach through the right elbow, and if you would like, tilt your left ear towards your left shoulder. So I just, uh, I just discovered this little variation in my own practice, so uh, see if you like it. Uh, it's a nice trapezius stretch. Uh, rock the head forward and back, maybe pausing in any space that, uh, where you want to, again, put that magnifying glass really delve deep into the experience of your shoulder blades, um, the attachment of your left arm bone, the right trapezius muscles, wherever it is, whatever it is, be present with the experience of your body throughout the practice. And then inhale, head back to center, release your hands, take the strap in your left hand, Left arm along the left ear, reach up out of your left waistline, right arm out, bend the left elbow, bend the right elbow, reach for the strap. What often happens is we come into this uh, cow face pose in the upper bo body, that's what it's called, Gomukhasana arms, uh, is that the chin tucks down, the chest pulls back. So let the collarbones be broad by hugging your right shoulder blade onto the back of your chest. Left elbow towards the ceiling, low ribs in and back, chin parallel to the floor. And then if you like this variation on the first side, try it again. Tilt your right ear towards your right shoulder and perhaps rock your head gently uh, front to back so that you might feel a, a additional stretch along the left side of the neck. So again, um, put the magnifying glass on your shoulders, on the right arm attachment, on the left side of the neck. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? How much you start to vary the poses. Uh, back off, uh, push harder. <laughs> Bring your head back to center, release the hands, and take your strap straight out in front of you. 
Hold your hands shoulder width distance apart and make your uh, strap taut. So you're pulling the hands gently apart, extend forward through the knuckles to lengthen the arms, and then plug your arms into your shoulder sockets like this. Okay, plug the arms in, lower ribs in and back, keep the, uh, the chest as it is as you begin to sweep the arms up and overhead. So knuckles over the shoulders, ground through the sits bones, reach from the waistline up and out through the knuckles, and then without moving the chest, just very subtly start to move the biceps back behind the ears, looking like this. So the low ribs will want to jump forward, draw them in and back as the arms come back. So again, this is a place to bring the microscope. So I was kind of thinking about um, the way that I teach and what, uh, why I teach the way I teach. I'm, I'm somebody who really likes uh, to look at very small things. So I think some of uh, the poses I like the best are poses where it doesn't feel, it doesn't look like we're doing a whole lot, but the experience of the pose is really big when you look closely at it. So this is one where I, I, that exemplifies that to me. Okay, start to walk, uh, slide your hands apart, and then begin to bring the strap down behind your back. So rolling the shoulders, inhale, the strap and arms lift, and exhale, bring it back. So do this with your breath. You can pause at any point along this journey into the chest uh, for, added <laughs> for added interest. Um, you may notice that uh, uh, the straighter your elbows are, the closer your hands are, the harder this is. So uh, if, it's, uh, if it's just too much, then slide your hands apart a little further. If you've practiced with me before, you've heard me say that this is something that I love. Every time I come to uh, this practice, I am shocked by how effective this shoulder rolling is, how, how tight my chest is. Okay, um, release the strap off to one side, and we're going to come forward out of Virasana. So come forward of your knees. I'm going to take off my socks at this point in the practice and uh, meet me in standing. Stand at the top of your mat with your feet hip width distance apart. Look down at your feet, lift and spread your toes and then place them down to create a conscious wide base with your feet on the floor. That is your connection, that is your ground. Push energy down from the hips, down through the soles of the feet and then from the earth, energize the legs. Lift up into the kneecaps as though you're pulling tight stockings up your legs. Skin hugging to muscle, muscle hugging to bone. Roll your shoulders back, turn your palms forward, chin parallel to the floor, embody your mountain. So this is one pose that I always like to say the name of, Tadasana, mountain pose, because I feel that the name of the pose is very informative in how we might practice this posture. Become your mountain. Tall, broad, immovable. As you inhale next, sweep your arms overhead, palms touching at the top. And then as you exhale, you might gently bend your knees as you fold forward. Fingertips to the floor, release your head. Inhale, palms coming to shin, shoulder blades on the back, chin and chest forward. Exhale and fold in, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, push down through the feet as you reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your side, shoulders roll back. Two more times, inhale, sweep the arms up, perhaps look up. With the exhale, flow forward, perhaps bending in the knees as you release the head down. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, rise up, push down, reach up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your side. Last time together, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, flow with the breath, release your head, push your feet down, lift your hips up. Inhale, lift halfway, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold even deeper into yourself. 
Inhale, move with the breath, gathering space, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your side. Shoulders roll back, palms forward. Please step the base of the big toes together. If that is not possible uh, for your body, place a block between your thighs and keep your feet apart for the next several, practice, several poses. Lift and spread your toes, root from your hips into your heels. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, interlace your fingers, cross your thumbs, point your index fingers skyward. Lift up out of your waistline, inhale, exhale, upper body leans to the right, hips shift gently to the left. Tone the muscles of your legs, lengthen your tailbone down. If, that, if you're feeling compression in the low back, that uh, hopefully helps. If not, then don't lean over so far. You don't have to lean much in this, lat in this lateral bend to create a lot of sensation down the left side body, as this is not a way most of us bend uh, frequently, unless we're doing this in yoga class. Turn your gaze upward, tilting your chin skyward. Notice if that changes the experience of the posture down the left side body. Breathe along your left side, pull out your magnifying glass. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. Take a good look at it, soften the edges of your mouth. And inhale back to center. Grow tall as you inhale and exhale. Lean the upper body to the left. Hips shift to the right. Tone the muscles of your legs. Root through your heels. Pull, use your left arm to pull your right arm longer. Again, to alleviate pain in the low back, then tone the legs, lengthen the tailbone, root through the heels, or shift out of the pose a little bit. Okay, this time notice as you turn your gaze skyward how it affects the a sensation along your right side body, along your shoulder, between your ribs, outer waistline, down the hip, reaching through the fingertips as the heels ground strongly into the mat, soften the edges of the mouth, and inhale back to center. Release your arms down, let's do some shoulder rolls forward, do some shoulder rolls backward, and uh, we'll do a few standing back bends here. So um, as I said, this is going to be a back bend focused practice today. So I'm turning to the side so you can see the situation of my pelvis. Often um, as we come to standing, the pelvis tilts forward. So you can imagine your pelvis like a bowl, <laughs> like a bowl, I'm holding the bowl of your pelvis. Um, you don't want your bowl to tilt forward, you don't want your bowl to tilt back, but you want your bowl upright. So grab your bowl and then lift into the front of your pelvic crest, lengthen your tailbone down to get that bowl upright. And then you're going to lift the torso up out of that bowl to come into a, the back bend. Okay, so keeping the bowl as it is, interlace your fingers behind your back, point your elbows towards the back wall, hugging your shoulder blades together behind your heart. Lengthen down through the tailbone as you lift into the heart space. And then begin to tilt your gaze up, chin towards the sky. Okay, there's a lot of debate, I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot of differing opinions about letting the head release back. So try for yourself, see what works in your body. I'm a releasing the head back kind of gal myself. But if you like to keep the head suspended in back bends, then uh, do so. Okay, elbows point back, shoulder blades together, empower your practice, lift into your heart, exhale, extend your knuckles down, squeeze your shoulders together, and then begin to curl in the upper back. Look along the ceiling towards the back wall, keep your legs engaged, pushing down through your heels, lifting up out of your waistline. The higher your heart, the longer your spine, the more space you'll have to go back. Release the head back if that feels okay, if that's in your practice. And then we're going to bring the chest forward, release the hands, bring the head up last. Okay, shake out the arms. Hopefully you have uh, some undisturbed wall space in your home, your home studio. Uh, so if you have some wall space, come to uh, bring your back against that wall space. And um, I haven't taught it this way before, so I'm going to set, I'm trying to figure out a good gauge for standing away from the wall. Let's stand about uh, a foot, uh, 12 to 14 inches away from the wall. So heels about 12 to 14 inches from the wall. Ground from your hips to your heels, sweep your arms overhead, 
interlace your fingers, reach up out of your waistline through your fingertips, and then tilt your chin and gaze up. Point to the sky with your index fingers and then begin to point towards the back wall. Okay, your arms may have reached the back wall. If they have reached the back wall, bring your chest forward and walk forward. <laughs> See, this is, this is how I learn how to teach things. I just uh, teach them incorrectly and then uh, learn from that. Okay, so um, if you need to, come further away from the wall and start again. Push down through the heels, look up, tilt your gaze back, reach back, reach back, reach back until you hit the wall. If you'd like, come back up. Walk further from the wall, push down through your feet, engage the muscles of your legs, lift up out of your waistline, look back, and then draw a line along the ceiling towards the back wall with your index fingers. And then maybe you went too far, like me. <laughs> so that was just a little experiment, um, because we will do a little um, drop back uh, practice later on. So um, let's roll the shoulders forward, up, back, and down. For those of you who don't know me, I am an experienced yoga teacher, but I like to innovate. Uh, I'm always hoping that I will learn new ways to teach to keep y'all interested. Okay, um, so base of the big toes touch. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, gently bend your knees, everyone, to bring your fingertips to the floor in front of you. Release the weight of your head down, and now we're gonna walk out the forward fold. Bend one knee, reach the opposite hip up and out, let the upper body hang forward. Back and forth a few times, releasing tension, compression from the lower spine. And then if it's okay for your knees, bring your uh, knees together, and then lift up onto your heels, bend your knees straight forward. Do that once, lift the hips, do it twice. Sink the hips to the heels, knees forward. And now we're going to come into a deep forward fold, walk with the fingertips behind the heels, and then push the feet into the floor, lift the hips up, try to bring the belly towards the thighs, wrap the arms around the backs of the calves, you can pull up on the backs of the ankles with the hands as you draw the crown of the head towards the floor. Lift your shoulders away from your ears. Pull your face towards your legs. Push down with the feet. Lift into the hips. Lift into the kneecaps. Extend through the crown of your head. Shoulders away from the ears. Deeply folding, sandwiching into yourself. And then inhale, walk the hands forward. Palms to shins, shoulders on the back, half lift. And then exhale, walk your hands behind your heels and take a seat into your imaginary chair. Your fierce little chair, thighs parallel to the floor. Ankles and knees hug in, or if you have the block, hug the block with the thighs. Round the spine, shin to chest, forehead towards or to the knees, weight in the heels, weight in the fingertips. Belly button in towards your spine, tailbone towards the heels. More space between the vertebra along the back side of your body. Take the magnifying glass along your spine. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling for five, four, three, two, and one. Push your feet down, lift your hips up, walk your hands forward, fold deeply in. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back, chin and chest forward. Exhale and fold in. Inhale, rise with the breath. Reach the arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides, Tadasana. Inhale, rise with the breath. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift. And exhale, walk your hands back. Take a seat in your fierce little chair once again. Tuck your chin to your chest. And then keep your hips low, spine round as you look forward. Reach your hands forward like you're holding a box. Reach through the fingertips, lengthen the arms, and then plug your arm bones into your shoulder socket, sides of the waistline back, hug the ankles and knees in, and then begin to look up, curl your gaze up, try to draw your biceps back behind your ears, just like we did when we were standing, sides of the waistline back, tailbone tucks down, weight in the heels, hug the ankles and knees together, look up, curl up, five, four, three, two, one, stand up, arms overhead, exhale, palms through heart center, and arms to your sides. Whew, keep breathing. 
Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, right arm underneath your left arm. Bring palms together. If palms are not accessible, grab shoulders. Either way, elbows down, chest lifts. Sink your hips into your imaginary bar stool. Shift weight to your right foot, lift your left leg, either point the toes back, bring the toes to the floor like a kickstand, or if you have the space, wrap the left foot behind the right ankle. If the foot is wrapped, begin to shift your knees towards the left, towards the middle line of your posture. Elbows down, chest lifts, upper body back. Sink the hips, weight in the front heel, opening up your shoulders, your upper back, your, uh, your outer hips, your low back for five, four, three, two, and one. Unwind, sweep the arms up. Exhale, left arm underneath the right. Palms together or grab shoulders, elbows down, chest lifts. Sink your weight into your imaginary bar stool, so higher than your fierce little chair. Uh, shift weight to your left foot, right leg lift, point the toes, toes to a kickstand, or wrap the foot behind the ankle. If the foot is wrapped, shift the knees towards the right, towards the middle line of your posture. Elbows down, chest lifts up and back, weight in the heels, sink the hips, wrap arms and legs tightly, opening up the shoulders, opening up the hips, soften the face for five, four, three, two, and one, unwind, sweep the arms up, reach up, look up, and exhale, arms to your sides. Okay, one more pose standing here. We are going to take our um, Vira Brikshasana, another pose that is good to think about the name of the pose, tree pose. Step into your left foot, and then turn your right knee and right toes out. So as you turn your knee and toes out, the tendency will be for your hips and chest to turn in that same direction. Don't let that happen. Keep your hips and chest squared forward and then bring your foot to the inside of your calf, inside of your thigh, or if you're feeling it today, take lotus leg with your right foot, turning the sole of your foot skyward, grabbing the outside of the foot with the left hand and pointing your right knee down towards the floor. Lengthen down through your, your spine, tone the muscles up your left leg as though you're pulling a tight stocking on, chest and hips squared forward, right hand to the heart if you're holding the left foot, but can keep the foot where it is, and let go of it, bring the left hand to the heart. If you'd like, sweep your arms out, up and overhead, grow the branches of your tree. Okay, so if you are in a room with a window that looks out to where you can see a tree, perhaps look at that tree. Find the stillness of a tree. Think about how much of a tree is below the earth. Can you extend energy from your body down into the floor and then from the earth draw up? Grow broader across the chest, broader across the front of the pelvis, broader across the, um, about across the mouth. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke there, but uh, I'll have to keep practicing that one. Okay. Find your expression of tree today, and something to be aware of today, too, is um, this can be a frustrating pose. Uh, some days your balance is not what you expect it to be, not what you hope it to be, and um, that can have a myriad of causes. Uh, again, this idea of accepting your body, your practice, your life, as it is right now, as a means of moving forward. Okay, release the foot. Okay, that's where, this is where we do our hula hoop. Okay, get the hula hoop going, one direction. Get some variation, you know, not by now, if you've been practicing with me for a while, you're like a hula, invisible hula hoop superstar. So do some tricks, other direction. My new theory, if you haven't heard it, is that hula hooping is a great counter pose to almost any yoga practice, almost any yoga pose. So uh, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm teaching it. Uh, right foot to the floor, left knee out, hips and chest squared forward, foot to the calf, foot to the thigh, or if you are feeling it, if you did it the first side, you should, uh, I recommend you do it the second side, take that lotus leg, sole of the, floor, <laughs> sole of the foot towards the ceiling, Knee extends towards the floor, extend through the inner groin of the left leg, through the inner knee, 
Contract through the outer hip, lengthen through the tailbone, square the hips and chest forward, left hand to the heart. If you can have the right hand at the heart without the foot slipping, take it there. If you feel you want to grow the branches of your tree up, out, and overhead, then get that going on as well. So either view a tree through your window or view a tree in your mind's eye. Consider what it is to be a tree. Okay, release your tree and uh, hula hoop one more time. I'm gonna get my hula hoop because I just love it so much. My new best friend, sorry Desi, hula hoops, my new best friend now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I do like it though, but it's, um, it's not great to talk to. Okay, other direction. So everybody's got their hula hoops at home, right? This is an essential, um, essential item. Okay. <laughs> Haven't perfected that trick yet. That trick so guys, who wants to do some headstand? Okay. If you said not me, then I'm gonna convince you otherwise. Headstand is great. So uh, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a nice tutorial. If you have a solid practice of headstand, just like, just like go there now. Um, be there for a while. It's a nice place to be. Okay, so if you do not have a headstand practice, first I'm going to show you my preferred hand position for headstand, which is the elbows, shoulder width this is part. A lot of people go wide like that, but you want to get a nice triangle base. Uh, this is a triangle too, but it's too big, too uh, big of angles, too ob obtuse of angles. Um, okay, so without getting too much into the geometry of this, do this if you have not done a headstand before. Just do this, and then we're going to take that, knuckles, maybe four to six inches from the wall, elbows below the shoulders, push my forearms down. Oh, Here's a little demo of what we're going to do with the upper back. Chest melts down, shoulder blades together on the back, lower ribs in and back, forearms push down. So again, chest melts, ribs back, push down. And then I'm going to lift my hips up into a dolphin pose, a forearm dog pose, aka, and look between my forearms. If this feels very difficult, unstable, then this is where I want you to practice today. You will build the strength here that you will down the road use to come up into headstand. If you're feeling good here, walk the feet in without allowing the shoulders to come forward at the elbows. Shoulders over the elbows, walk the feet in, lower the head down, cup the back of the head just slightly between the heels of the hands. Push down with the forearms, lift through the shoulders, walk the feet in, lift one leg up, Kick your heels to a wall. I'm using a glass wall, but I've had a lot of experience doing this. I wouldn't suggest starting with a glass wall. Push down through your head, push down through your forearms, lift through your shoulders, and seek balance. So I've got a whole little spiel that I've been doing this week in the headstand. If you've heard it, um, lucky you, you get to hear it again. <laughs> so my headstand spiel is uh, referring back to my love of Hamilton right now. My, um, my, my saving grace, Hamilton. Uh, so there's one song about the end of the Revolutionary War where the chorus is, the world turned upside down. Um, I think it's a relatable uh, term right now. We're, I think uh, I, we are all feeling that a little bit, uh, that Things have changed so dramatically, so quickly, and uh, we are all in a um, phase of adaptation. <laughs> uh, and this is a pose that requires some adaptation. 
So if you do not have a practice of headstand and you are trying to establish one and you have just got up onto your head for the first time, it is jarring, it is hard, it's hard to find the balance, it's hard to find the strength. It all starts with a single moment. So um, we get stronger by practicing. The more we come here, the more our body gets acquainted with it, we learn the balance, we, uh, we get stronger in these, uh, in these certain ways, and it becomes easy, more easier, more easier, and uh, it also maybe becomes something that your body enjoys. This uh, flipping, flipping upside down, reversing of the poles, uh, shaking up the bloodstream. Okay, so um, if you've done something, great. Uh, if you've done nothing and stayed tuned, uh, really great, because that's sometimes even harder. Okay, either way, wherever you're at, we're going to meet up in child's pose. Bring the knees together, hands to the floor, push your hands down and forward to, so you can really tuck your tailbone towards your heels, rounding the low spine. Keep the hips low and then walk the arms forward. Reach out through the fingertips and lower the forehead, lower the forearms to the mat. So uh, this is something, a place, a time that I feel is very special in the yoga practice, this um, residual energy after we do our inverted practice. And sometimes we just don't take the time to notice it. So. Uh, Put a microscope on this moment. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. In this posture, which seems like um, a subtle posture somewhat, this child's pose, uh, really, really notice the minutia here. Then notice how the somewhat, uh, somewhat small act of sweeping your arms back and turning your palms up and letting the heads of the arm bones release forward changes the energy, changes the experience of your body in this moment. Return to your breath. Notice in these slower moments what comes up. Are you looking at your phone? Are you looking at your email? <laughs> uh, that's okay. Just come back. Accept those tendencies. Reroute the brain to be present in these moments. You made the commitment to be on your mat. Just stay here. Let yourself breathe. And at, when you let yourself breathe, I know for myself, when I let myself breathe, I'm like, damn, I love breathing. And then I end up just having you guys here for five minutes. Okay, uh, push your way back up. We have done very little uh, downward dog, little to none. And we're gonna push back into down dog now. Hands down and forward, hips up and back, release the weight of your head. And then inhale, lift the right leg up and lunge the right foot forward between the hands. Set up with a long stride. Hands on either side of the front foot, knee over the ankle. And notice this posture where you're feeling, what you're feeling, how this might be uh, laid on in the practice to do our first lunge. And then how does, that, uh, how does that change the experience of the pose in your body? Collarbones broad, reach back through the left heel, lift through the left inner thigh. Keep your legs and hips as they are, right palm to the floor or a block, left hand, right hand to your right thigh. Push your palm into your thigh, revolve your left ribs towards your right inner thigh, sweep your right arm up. Either stack the shoulders here or start to open the chest up. Right uh, ribs revolve towards the earth, left ribs towards the ceiling, embrace the sky. And then look down, hand down, press back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat and exhale, 
lunge your left foot forward between your hands, set up on fingertips or ball fists on either side of your front foot, lift through your back inner thigh, reach through the back heel, shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad, soften the edges of your mouth, arrive in your lunge. Again, consider that doing the lunge uh, for the first time late in the practice might be a new experience, might uh, offer something, a new way to do this pose, something new to be curious about and explore. And also accept. Right hand to the floor, left hand to your left thigh, push your palm into your thigh, revolve your right ribs towards your inner thigh, sweep your arm up, stack your shoulders, and either choose to stay here or again, open up, embrace the sky, side to neck back, tops of the ears back, and then hand down, press back, down dog. Inhale, come forward, plank. Exhale, lower the knees down. Take the knees slightly wider than the hips. Grab the outer edges of your mat. Tilt your tailbone towards the sky so you're doing cow pose. And then walk your arms forward. So you're pushing the edges of your mat away from you as you reach your chin forward, melt your chin and chest down. So this is a, uh, this is a nice way to practice uh, puppy dog pose, or at least the way that I like to do it. <laughs> uh, so there's this grip of the mat, pushing the mat forward, giving you an opportunity to really lengthen the distance between your knuckles reaching forward and your outer hips reaching back and curling up. Feel the strength of your upper back, pulling your shoulder blades together, pushing the back of your heart towards the floor. And then from here, we're going to slide forward onto our stomachs, right, uh, <laughs> right into Sphinx Pose. Elbows below the shoulders, uh, forearms parallel to one another, send back through the legs, shoulders back, collarbones broad, left fingertips towards your right elbow, bend the right knee, point the right toes, reach back with the right hand, making a pistol with your right hand and taking the um, webbing of your thumb to the, the inner base of your right big toe. And then pull the heel towards the outer hip. If you have the space in the shoulder, I'm gonna invite you to turn the knuckles forward, pushing the heel even more deeply down towards the floor. Right outer ribs revolve forward, square the hips and chest forward, kick with the foot, push with the hand, and then left hand to the floor and curl up if you need more from this. If you are already feeling quite a shoulder opening, quite a quad stretch, then you don't need to come up onto your hand here. I want to say I love you just the way you are, whoever you are. Um, empower your practice to be, uh, to work for you, not against you. Okay, let it go, let it go. That was terrible. I'm no Elsa, I'll tell you guys. I wish. Right fingertips towards your left elbow, bend your left knee, point your left toes, reach for the inside of your foot with your left hand, pull your heel towards your outer hip, resisting with the foot, so keeping the leg actively pushing into the hand. Turn the knuckles forward, elbow up, push the heel towards the outer hip, revolve the left ribs forward, square the hips and chest forward. If you need more, do it. If you don't need more, don't do it. So maybe the hand comes down, maybe the chest curls up. You know, if you, if you, uh, if you put the hand down, um, it could be a better pose for you, but it could be a worse pose for you. It could, you could be making the pose worse. <sighs> You're just fucking up there. Just kidding. Um, I, I don't mean to be like scolding you or reprimanding you. I'm trying to like tell you guys you're awesome and um, choose choose yourself instead of some some dumb yoga pose. Okay. <laughs> Get a little loopy here. Okay. Uh, let's keep back bending. Let's keep shoulder opening. Uh, next thing, chin on the floor. Bend your knees. Flex your feet. Grab the outer edges of your ankles for a bow pose. 
Okay, so what, ha what tends to happen here is the knees and ankles want uh, to splay apart. Keep your ankles and knees hip width distance apart to keep your lower spine long and your lower back secure. Shoulders on the back, begin to kick with your ankles, lift with your thighs. If you can only reach one ankle, grab the right side this time. We'll get the, the second side on the second time around. Shoulders on the back, lift the thighs, kick the ankles. We won't be here forever, but we're still here. Be here in the pose with your breath, using the mechanics of the pose to open the chest and using your intention to broaden the chest. Bring the shoulder blades together on the back. Kick and lift. And then release. Bring your left cheek to the floor. Big toes touch. Heels widen apart. Arms heavy at your sides. Head to the arm bones forward. Soften your neck. And return to your breath. Let yourself breathe. Option to arrive in this moment. Ad infinitum. Okay, chin on the floor, bend your knees, flex your feet. If you got the right ankle on the first side, grab the left ankle, otherwise grab both. Hug your knees, hip width distance apart. Kick and lift, kick and lift, kick and lift, kick and lift. Let the shoulders be pulled back, the ankles kicking into the hands, pulling the arms taut like the strings of your bow. Side from neck back, crown of the head lifts. Imagine you are the, uh, the beautiful maiden, perhaps a mermaid, at the front of the bow of the ship, crashing against the waves, uh, crash a little bit forward and back, rock, rock it out, and then lower the knees down. We're going to roll onto the left shoulder. So um, I used to do this pose, this uh, side bow pose, and I really, you know, I just did, when I first started yoga, I just did everything. Like push, you gotta push here. I'm gonna do it the deepest I can do it. And um, that's not really my style as much anymore. Um, so this pose, I invite you to take some passivity here. Just let the earth pushing into your shoulder create some shoulder opening. Moving the head of the arm bone back, the shoulder blade deeply onto the back of the chest. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? Breathe into it. Option to enjoy it. And then come back through center. If you have just the left foot, now go back to grabbing the right angle and then roll onto your right side. Again, uh, once you have the shape of the pose, uh, approach the pose with some passivity. Just curiosity about what your body in this shape against the earth creates sensation-wise, maybe even emotion-wise. And then back toward to center, release the ankles, turn your right cheek to the mat, heads the arm bones forward, big toes touch, heels wide apart, head heavy, neck soft, arms heavy, upper back broad. Take a soft gaze perhaps at the edge of your own mat or if you like, close your eyes. Again, arrive with each breath bringing you into the experience of this moment. And in this moment, what is there to do? Just be. Just breathe. Chin to the floor, tuck your toes, plant your wrists by your ribs. Send your hips all the way back to your heels for a brief extended child's pose with the toes tucked under. Then walk your hands back towards your hips. 
take a seat on your heels and uh, allow me to check the time for a moment. Okay. Um, we, <laughs> it's about the same as uh, what I had going time-wise yesterday as far as uh, how much time you have to do this backbend extravaganza. Um, and we're going to start with camel pose. So I, I'm trying to give you lots of options here. Um, I think we did a lot of good setup for a backbend practice today. Uh, so if uh, backbending is something that you feel comfortable with, that you just love, uh, then this is going to be great for you. Uh, if backbending is not something you love, then I'm going to give you lots of options and ways to uh, help yourself um, get better acquainted with it, uh, more comfortable. Okay, so we're going to do a camel pose. So camel is uh, on the knees. Knee, hips over the knees, knees are hip width distance apart, the bowl of the pelvis is upright, so tilting the front of the pelvis upward, lengthening the lower spine downward. Grounding from the hips to the knees, roll your shoulders back, interlace your fingers behind your back. Hug your shoulder blades together behind your heart, tilt your chin up, lengthen your knuckles down, lift from the back of your heart to the top of your sternum. The more you lift your heart, the longer your spine, the deeper your back bends. Look along the ceiling towards the back wall, reaching your knuckles towards the floor, keeping your hips over your knees. If it feels okay, release your head back. Push down through the feet, push down through the knees. Stabilize the hips, lift up out of the heart, curl back. Opening up the front of the body, and then bring the chest forward, arms forward, head comes up last. Tuck your toes, bring your knees together, take a seat on your heels, and I'll give you the next few options here. So watch me first. The, uh, the first option will be to do camel. Um, that, that's a good place to start. And then uh, from there, I'm gonna give you some options for practicing kind of the camel drop back, which uh, builds, you can build to the standing drop back. Okay. Um, Hands on the hips, length the tailbone down. Uh, camel pose, hands in the hands in the back to pockets, push the flesh of the buttocks down, lift the chest up. Curl back. Either keep the hands here, or if you have blocks, you can bring the hands to the blocks. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. Or you can go further by bringing the hands to the heels. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. Lift the heart, head back if it's okay, for your neck. Hands to hips, chest up, shoulders forward, head up last. Okay, that's, that's option one and two. Option three is to take one arm along, <laughs> take one arm up, I'm taking my right arm. Ground, lift, ground, lift, ground, lift, curl back, look back, curl back, look back, touch back. Oh, come back up, making a nice grunting sound, and then do it on the second side. Ground through the hips, lift out of the waistline, look up, reach up, look up, reach up, curl back, look back, curl back, look back, hand down, come back up, and there's a third thing to do if you're doing all this. Lengthen the tailbone down, lift into the hip points, sweep the arms overhead, palms together, reach up, look up, reach back, look back, reach back, look back, reach back, look back, reach back, hands down, oh! <laughs> Um, if you didn't, if you couldn't gather from my um, groaning, that's not easy. It's not easy for me. Okay, tuck your toes under, take a seat on your heels. Do one of those things, do all of those things. Um, yeah, do, just do this, this is nice too. Uh, this is kind of a neutralizing pose. Um, while you guys do your thing, I'm gonna do this. Real quick, I need a little uh, little counter pose. I learned I could do this. Fun. Okay. Hopefully you've done some you've done some camel posturing, and we are ready to do more. So bring your mat to a wall. Again, I'll use this uh, window wall because I feel like it's more visible for you. Um, get some blocks if you have them. You could probably use books, 
Mm, probably wouldn't work as well. Hardcover books, certainly, if you, if you have some big old hard volumes, you might uh, angle them up against the wall like so. And this is what we'll do. Okay, so I'm gonna turn away from the wall. This is wheel pose. Um, I'm going to take my hands to the blocks. The blocks are here to prevent my uh, wrists from overextending. See this? I want my wrists like this, 90 degree angle. What often happens with uh, wheel pose is people's wrists kind of go like that. And that's not a good position to bear weight. Okay. Heels into the hips, feet are hip width distance, uh, hands on the blocks, come to the top of your head, lift your hips up, elbows in, roll towards the bridge of your nose, walk your feet in, heart towards the wall, and then everyone together, let's do some grunting. <sighs> Straighten your arms, chest towards the wall, gaze between the hands, ground through the inner feet, lift through the outer hips, lengthen through the tailbone, chest towards the wall, breathe, inner thighs, Wrap towards the floor, outer hips lift, push down through your feet, push down through your hands, shoulder blades together on the back, take some breath, chin to chest, come on down. If you were up, alternative to this would be a bridge pose, or you can even put a block underneath your hips for a supported bridge pose. Okay, so um, my, one of my, uh, one of my teachers, Christina Sell, um, she would always, uh, she would get really into these backbending practice, practices, which I loved. And she'd always say, your best backbends happen when you're sick of doing backbends. So if you're sick of doing backbends, you're in luck because your best ones are coming right up because your ego is like, this is like, whatever, dude. Um, I'm not doing this anymore. Or is it your id? I don't know. I didn't really take psychology classes, to be honest. Okay, feet parallel. Let's do this. Hands on the blocks or on the floor. Push your feet down, lift your hips up, come to the top of your nose, roll towards the bridge of your nose, chest towards the wall, walk your feet in. One, two, three, push the arms straight. Gaze between the hands, ground through the inner feet, lengthen through the tailbone. And we're gonna come on up. Walk up that darn wall. Okay. Move those blocks. Here it comes the surprise ending to a um, to a really awesome a really awesome afternoon. Lengthen down to the tailbone. Arms overhead. Arms back. Look back. Reach back. Hands to the wall. Walk the hands down. Chest to the wall. Walk the hands up. Do this 20 times, pause the stream, keep doing it, ad infinitum, go down, come up. I've been doing this all week, so my body is like, my body's used to this right now, because uh, this is my, okay, so do that, and then watch out, then oh, you can do this, okay, <laughs> my coming back up's not so good, but uh, do all that, uh, and then have a good laugh, <laughs> and move, move away from that wall. Goodbye, wall. We're done with you for now. Thank you for your service. Okay. <sighs> Downward facing dog. Push your hands down and forward, hips up and back. Walk out your dog. Do a little... Uh, what do you call this in skiing? I don't know, I never skied either. Just like I didn't take psychology classes. Hips side to side, like this. And then inhale, right leg lifts, look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right shin forward behind your wrist, setting up for pigeon pose. Extend your left leg straight back, you can either tuck the toes or point the toes, yogi's choice. If your right hip is down like this, your left hip is Lift it up, and then slide a blanket or a block underneath your right hip. Prop it up. Square your hips and chest forward. Roll your shoulders back. Lift along the front of your torso. And now drape the length of your torso forward. Perhaps coming down to forearms. If you do this a lot and you're like, need more, arms can be forward. Forehead, chin, chest down. 
Arrive with your breath, with your body. So at this point in the practice, we, we really, uh, we're pumping the brakes. We're slowing down big time. So uh, we, um, if you were to chart the practice as far as like uh, stress, like how much you are doing, how much you are pushing, how much you are engaging um, at any given moment, um, it, would, it would be like, be going like this. We just kind of hit the high point with our um, with our a little drop back uh, practice. Now we're kind of going back down. So the posture itself here um, shouldn't be very difficult to physically maintain. The difficulty here, in my mind, is that you have to experience your body in this pose, which can be a difficult thing to sit with. Um, so, face that challenge. Take a couple more deep, slow, conscious breaths. Down into the low back, down into the right hip. If you're experiencing this posture as knee pain, then um, you might try doing this pose on your back in the form of thread the needle or figure four. Almost always trying to avoid knee pain. I could even say always. Okay, walk your hands back. Uh, left forearm uh, below your chest, right fingertips off to the side. Revolve your chest towards the right, keeping your legs and hips as they are, possibly looking up. And then come back through center. Let's twist the opposite way. Right forearm to the floor, left fingertips on the floor. Revolve your ribs, right ribs towards the left, left shoulder stacks on right. Back through center, tuck the back toes if they are not, and make your way back to down dog, gingerly. Turn your knees out, turn your knees and toes out to the right, bend your left knee and reach your right hip straight up and back. Shift it from side to side, grounding through the outer edge of your right foot. And then second side, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat, lunge your left shin behind your wrists. Track the right leg straight back, toes tucked or toes pointed, chest squares forward, possibly propping the left hip. Roll the shoulders back, lengthen along the front of your torso, and then drape the length of your spine forward, possibly coming down onto forearms or elbows. Find your expression of pigeon pose, that pose that um, brings you into your body in an interesting way, identifying where you uh, may be feeling tension or blockage. And then with the tension, with breath, can you start to feel uh, the boundaries of your, uh, the restrictions, the boundaries of your body slowly expanding. Left forearm down, right fingertips to the mat. Revolve your left ribs towards the right. Stack your shoulders, look up. Keep your legs and hips as they are. Right forearm down, left elbows, left fingertips down. Revolve the chest towards the left. Come back, down dog. Point the toes at an angle to the left. Bend the right knee. Push the left hip up and back. Lift into the left kneecap. Ground through the outer edge of the left foot. 
if you like that. If you like that one, push your hands down for it, shift your hips up and back, final down dog. Melt your knees to the mat, swing your legs forward, and come to lie on your back. Okay, knees into the chest, cup the knees with the hands, push the knees into the hands, flatten the low back against the floor, sway the knees side to side. Then draw your knees in and up towards your armpits, grab the outer edges of your feet, fold the soles of the feet towards the ceiling, shins perpendicular, and happy baby, rock side to side. Okay, feet together, knees apart, interlace your fingers around the outer edges of your feet, flatten your low back against the floor. Extend from your inner groin out through your inner knees, contract through your outer hips. Let the pressure of your feet into your hands, pull your arms taut, head to the arm bones, curl away from the mat. And finally, bring your knees together and give yourself a big hug. You are awesome. Truly. Chin to chest, forehead towards your two knees, squeeze your legs together, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, back body away from the floor, belly button in towards the spine, pull in, get small, get tight, get really smaller, and then let it go. Take a moment to gather your things. Uh, we will be cooling down rapidly here in our savasana. So um, I am almost over time already, but I'm going to do five more minutes here. Um, so even in those five minutes, you can, um, you can reach nirvana. Um, <laughs> uh, so put on some clothing if you, might, if you think you might get cold in that time span and uh, get some support in the form of a uh, bolster underneath the knees or a blanket behind the head, whatever works for you. Arms at your sides, shoulders tucked underneath your chest, palms turned skyward, legs extended out. So again, uh, I mentioned the bolster underneath the knees or a blanket underneath the knees. After all of those back bending, um, <laughs> back bending practices, um, you might notice some residual compression or uh, pain or discomfort in the low back. So that should help the low back ground uh, more fully by bringing some height underneath the knees. Find your way to your form of savasana today. So another pose where the naming of the pose really uh, gives us a clue into how we might approach this shape. Savasana, dead body pose, corpse pose. So consider that the body is entering a state of rest. Hopefully a state of peace. We might let the body be for a short time today. We invite the body into this state of rest. Often the mind takes the opportunity to skedaddle, get out, move on to the next. Notice that tendency. Arrive at an 
Consider that there might be an opportunity to watch the mind, observe the thoughts without urgency, without an agenda. If and when you are ready, begin to bring movement back to the extremities of your physical being. Moving fingers, toes, wiggling the nose, and then making larger movements, perhaps stretching the arms overhead, rocking the arms and legs back of the head from side to side. Eventually bend your knees, Feet to the floor, extend your right arm along your right ear and roll onto your right side, transitioning from our corpse position into this fetal pose. Keep your eyes closed and press your way back to seated. Any seat. And he seems appropriate for these final movements. Ground through the legs and hips, grow tall along your spine, and bring your hands onto your heart, please. Reconnect with your breath. Perhaps feel the heartbeat of your chest. We'll close practice with a single sound of OM. Exhale and inhale. Thank you for being with me during this time. Uh, just those that little <laughs> indicator that somebody was here really means a lot to me. Um, please reach out, let me know who you are. Uh, I'd love to think about the people who are practicing with me while I teach. Um, helps me form my jokes. <laughs> um, okay, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, namaste. Yeah, uh, so if you are a uh, live viewer or if you have uh, tuned in to a previously recorded stream, um, I would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, if you know me like that, send me a text or call me. 
Um, if not, if you don't have my number or anything, then please uh, contact me through the Athens Public website. Those messages will make their way to me. Um, yeah, you don't need to comment or criticize or anything like that. You can just tell me who you are and uh, where, you know, maybe send me a photo of your practice space or your, uh, your cat on your head or uh, anything like that. I would love to feel that connection with you. And um, yeah, so thanks for joining me. Um, I will be here next week, uh, Monday 10 a.m., Tuesday 10 a.m., Wednesday 5.30. So uh, if you do have requests for things you would like to practice at this time, uh, please let me know and I will put that on the sequence. Okay.